What's up, everybody? Hope you're doing good. It's a beautiful day. Thank you very much. Did you miss me? Yeah, I missed you too. You know you can say it. I missed you. Thank you so much. I've been away. I've been traveling. I've been doing a lot of things. But the good part is I've been recording. So you can expect some good things coming up. If you did like the documentary about Kenya, if you haven't watched it, I suggest you do it. I did a trip to Kenya talking about New Year's. I really wanted to experience New Year's in Kenya because I heard a lot of good things about Kenya, how they party, how they live life, and I uh, had a tremendous experience. So I decided to do some more stuff for you in different areas of Africa. There's one really, really becoming very, very, very soon in a few days. So how are you doing today? I'm doing great. My name is Zach. If this is your first time, nice to meet you. You know, uh, you can subscribe here if this is your first time. I'm sure we're going to love each other. We are one big family. We talk about a lot of things. We talk about Africa. We talk about the diaspora and we have discussions that include us so we can grow together. So today we're going to talk about something very interesting. In fact, you remember we spoke about um, Burkina Faso. Here's a map. We also spoke about Niger. Here is a map. We also spoke about Mali. Here's a map. Now, these are three very interesting countries that in the past couple of years have worked very hard to free themselves from new colonization. I'm going to explain to you. You know, many, many years ago, Europeans sat together in Berlin in order to come and share Africa. So they wanted to go to Africa and each have a part of Africa without them having to fight each other. That's how countries came about. Before that, there was no countries in Africa. The country was a big block. Yes, there were tribes. Yes, there were clans and families. Yes, there were communities of people that were interacting with each other. Sometimes fought each other, but most of the time we lived in peace. They intermarried, they exchanged, they did commerce and business together. But when Europeans came to Africa, each wanted a part of Africa so they can loot and steal and take away minerals, whatever, everything from the continent because the continent was so rich. But in order for them to come to Africa, they had to create countries and discuss within themselves so they don't have to fight each other. That's why they created Congo as it is today. They created Rwanda. They created Uganda. They created Tanzania, Kenya, Burundi, Namibia, South Africa, all these countries even though the land existed, were never countries as they are today. They were just land. Anyway, our subject today is Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. They are moving forward. Niger has decided to now, through the president, to create a tomato development plant. This is a tomato treatment plant that's going to not just sell brand new tomato from the land, that are organic, that best quality, and also put them into boxes for development. In the past, they used to do it in a way that they will send it to Europeans at, at a very cheap price. And Europeans will take this product, these tomatoes and stuff, and resell it at a very high price. And sometimes resell it to the country that sent it to them. Let me repeat that. An African country produced tomato, sells it to Europeans, Europeans wash it, put it into box, and sell it back to Africans. Now that's not going to happen anymore. Ibrahim Traoré, young man, about 34 years old, great spirit, is moving the country to a new direction. He's now very slowly working to the economics of the country, trying to fix things, trying to develop, to push the country forward. Ibrahim Traoré, he was receiving... Um, lump sum, a salary as a president. He refused to take the salary. He said, I don't want my salary as a president anymore. Because I'm a soldier, please pay me as a soldier. Pay me the soldier's salary. Do not pay me as a president. And by doing so, he led the country into a movement. What's this movement? Everybody in the country is contributing from their personal salary into the government to help the government fight against terrorists in the country. You see that? Leading by actions. I'm going to suppress my salary. Don't pay me as a president. Pay me as a soldier. And everybody in the country decided from now on, we're going to give a portion, a percentage of our salaries into this box so that this box can enable us to go and fight and defeat terrorists. Congratulations. Now he's done something really, really great, creating a tomato plant where they're going to produce tomato and sell it to other countries. 
in order to re generate revenue back for the country in the prospection of developing the country so you see here the man is not working for his own pockets like most african countries african president do the man is working for the community okay let me explain to you in africa becoming a president is an amazing opportunity to enrich yourself and enrich your friends and your family members and their family members so when you become president you don't want to leave because you get used to stealing nobody questions you because you're the president after all that's very sad but however these countries mali burkina faso and niger they don't want that anymore they decided to take the countries back from the hand of the oppressors the oppressors are who they are the colonizers that came into their country to try loot and now these people have said enough we're taking back the power and the lead of our countries now niger this is niger what happened to niger niger toppled their president the president named mohammed bazoum why was he toppled? Mohamed Bazoum was toppled because the people of Niger were not happy with him. Why were they not happy with him? Because they felt like Mohamed Bazoum was in fact working for the interest of French people and not the interest of the people of Niger. So they say enough is enough. Now his own God, his own body of bodyguards are the ones that toppled him. And they've changed everything. These are military. They are soldiers. They say we have enough of now having our country suffering within the hand of Bazoum. We're taking the lead of the country. Why is this? Niger is a very rich country. Niger has got uranium. Uranium is what you need for the production of nuclear electricity. So France had been taking uranium from Niger for many, many years at a very cheap price. So they come into the country. They say, okay, we're going to take uranium from your country. But we're setting the price. We're going to pay only the price we want to pay. You're not telling us how much you're selling yet. We are telling you how much we're paying you. And after that, they're going to take the uranium back to France. They will create electricity for themselves. They have so much electricity for themselves, they will resell electricity to other European countries. In the meantime, in Niger, many people are sleeping hungry and in the dark because they have no electricity. Niger was in such a difficulty that they needed to import electricity from Nigeria. Now, this is Niger. And this is Nigeria. These are two different countries. Here is Niger again, and here is Nigeria. Now, Niger had to import electricity from Nigeria. In the meantime, they are selling the very product that you need to create electricity to France. While France is also exporting to other countries. Now, that was the main reason why these people said, we do not want our president anymore. Because clearly, he doesn't want the country to move forward. Now, what's happening in Niger right now? Niger is also moving right, moving to the right direction. Their economy, they say, is growing, not just that of Niger. Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso are three countries that have done a massive change in their countries. And their economy has been growing in spite of the fact that they've been blocked by other countries. So let me explain to you that. These three countries, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, have worked very hard to free themselves from their president, whom they accuse of being traitors or selling the future of the country to Western nations. After doing that, these countries at the bottom, these African countries, West African countries, blocked these three countries from being free from their oppressors. They say, no, we're not going to give you an opportunity to export anymore through our ports because you've decided to topple your president. Now, why do they need these other African nations? They need them because, as you can see, Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso are enclaved countries they are in the continent they do not have port to the sea so they are unable to export or import anything coming from international shores they have to use these other countries ports in order to import anything and do exchange now these countries here in order to punish them they say we are not allowing you to import or export anything through our port now why did this country do that because most of their leaders are also corrupt. Most of their leaders feel like they should keep a relationship with the ex-masters, even though these people want freedom now. Now, what's happening in Niger is that Niger is exporting petrol, oil. They've got a tremendous amount of oil that they want to export to the world. Now, the goal was to build the pipeline coming from Niger all the way down to Benin to the sea. Now, when the group of African nations that's called ECOWAS blocked these countries from operating, 
This country named Benin also blocked Niger from doing whatever they were supposed to do in terms of economics. But now they realize Niger want to export stuff. They want to export their petrol. If they do not open the port, Niger will find another country to export through that country. They say, you know what? Uh, we know we're not in good terms right now. But you can let your things come past us. Because it's hitting us very strongly in terms of economics. So in other words, blocking somebody does not necessarily mean you're going to make them suffer. Sometimes by trying to make somebody suffer, you are actually making yourself suffer too. And congratulations for them for changing their mind at last. So all I want to say to you today is sometimes you have to fight the good fight. And the good fight is never easy. You're going to be faced with tremendous amount of resistance of those people who don't see things on your lens. But sometimes you have to persist and continue and give some people time because people do not understand at the same level. Sometimes it takes people time to understand that whatever they were thinking was not the truth. And the truth, in fact, is on the other side. Thank you very much, fellas. It was a great pleasure. Uh, it's good to see a brand new wave of people that are young, people that are trying to actually work for Africans. A president that says, I don't want my salary anymore. Pay me as a soldier because the country is at war. The youth that say, okay, from now on, we're going to learn how to use weapons so we can defend our country. In other words you can see other places in africa where they are at war there are countries in africa at war right now but they are busy singing dancing playing the country is at war but you are dancing to at the african nation you're just checking your butt where are your brains where are your brains god bless